Hello, boxing fans. This is EBN. Just talking about the post fight. Now I'm going to sum up all of them really in the same video. I've been busy. Um, yeah, I've done 12 hour shift yesterday. It was hard. I've done a lot of work lately. I've been doing 50 hours a week. It's hard work, guys. It's hard work. Just got in. I was going to do the video last night. Got in, sat down, put my laptop on, woke up. Laptop was sitting on my chest. And, you know, I was asleep. <laughs> Woke up today, thought I'd do it today instead. Um, yeah, so straight away, we're going to start with Martinez, Chavez. Straight away, I liked Martinez's work. He was very effective moving. It looked like straight away, Chavez was very confused by the movement. I've always thought he would be confused by movements. A lot of guys actually stand there and fight. And for the most part, you know, Martinez did not stand and fight. And he done his, his, he done his thing. He moved a lot. He did, he did a good Amir Khan impression, really. He threw out good flurries, he landed a good few shots on the lacking defense of Chavez. And, you know, like I pointed out in my post, in my, uh, sorry, prediction video, you know, this is going to end in a unanimous decision. And like I said, it did. Why? Because one thing I found out was that Chavez Sr. has got a head three times as thick as the average person. Now, let's just say human genetics says that um, it's going to get his head, the son's head, it was going to be half as thick. That's still 1.5 times as thick as the average human being. And that was the case in this fight. He took up a lot of punishment. He didn't ever seem tremendously hurt in this fight. At times he did look wary about going forward. And he was on the back foot, which I've never seen from Chavez before. But then again, he was never in the point where his legs were doing a funny little dance. And he never went down, obviously. Uh, this all was changing until the 10th round when Martinez, you know caught up with something and that is father age you know you can't keep away from father time for so long at the 10th round he started blowing he started sticking a lot more and not moving you know and then Chavez started to get his right hand off he started to land a few more punches the straight right actually started coming into play if you started to give rounds 10 11 and 12 to Chavez I wouldn't argue with you if you didn't I wouldn't argue with you but if you give round 12 to Martinez, then I would argue with you. You know, straight away, I give a round, every round except the 2nd and the 11th and 12th to um, Chavez. No, that didn't make sense. Basically, I give rounds 2, 11 and 12 to Chavez. That's right. Um, yeah, other than that, I've got not really much to say. Um, Martinez obviously went down in the 12th. He got caught. He's he showing his age. He couldn't move. He just stopped moving. He got caught on the ropes and he took a big punch and he took a follow-up and then he went down. And I'm not surprised, but what he did show is his own lack of defense. In fact, you could have said it was having a can't fight in that night because really, Martinez didn't have a brilliant defense. He was relying on his reflexes and his movement. Um, once that left in those final rounds, you know, he looked a lot more vulnerable. And if a rematch was to happen, I'd be much more um, prepared to put a bit of money on the Chavez stoppage rounds 10 to 12. I think you'll know what to do a lot better this time, and I think you'll know what to work on. Obviously, this is, on, this is all Chavez's own fault because he's not a great trainer. He doesn't train very well. And I think, you know, we all knew it was always on the cards that Chavez, if he didn't get to him with his size, he was never going to win the unanimous decision unless it was fixed. And that obviously wasn't the case in this fight, thank God. Uh, I'm going to move on to where I see them going. Um, to be honest, I don't really care, really. Uh, Martinez, I don't want him to go up to 168. Why go up to 168? You've just won your title. You've just won the biggest fight of your career. Stay at 160. Fight either Golovkin or or Pirog or Gil. Fight one of those guys. Make your money. Unify the division. There's no point in weight hopping. If you're going to go down to fight um, Floyd Mayweather, can your body handle the weight hopping? I don't know. Uh, if he can, I don't know. I don't. I don't expect Martinez to win that fight. Just the way, just a few things of the way he tired later on suggest that he wouldn't know what to do against someone like Mayweather, who's going to shot pot him to death. Um, next on the line would be Andre Ward at 168. No, forget that. Andre Ward's got a good um, little career going here, where he's grabbing everyone and taking them to his weight. You know, you're the champion now. You, you're a good champion, 160 pounds. You'd be the champion in the fan's eyes for a long time. Probably longer than um, Andre Ward has been in the 
people's uh, the champion at um, 168. So, you know, why don't you talk about some kind of a catchweight situation and try and Dawson his ass, you know, and I would say get it at 162, 163 pounds. Try, try what he thinks about that or say 160. If he says no, then you can say, well, I tried to make the fight. I'm not going all the way up to fight him. What's the point? I've already came up a few weights in my career. He's never done nothing. Never give nothing away. So that's something you can say. There you go. Next fight, Alvarez, uh, Jorgecito Lopez. Huge mismatch. Told you it would be over within six rounds. In fact, I said it could be over in the first two. It wasn't. But um, I think I got the right... I said Alvarez, KO, I think by six. And it was. You know, the guy, Jorgecito, he came out well. He had very good hands. He let them go. The only problem was he was fighting a beast in there. And the guy is a very hard boxer puncher. So, it, the right was always on the roll. Huge, uh, well, it's a huge mismatch. I didn't enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's basically all I can say about it, really. What did everyone expect, you know? Josito Lopez is going to come up two divisions, look very fleshy, and try and bang him out? No. You know, he had a good goal, but every time he got hit, he looked like he was in serious pain. He went down from the body shots, and he's going down hard from the body shots. It's like his legs were given up underneath him from the body shots, not the chin shots. So, that's all I've got to say on that fight. Who do I want to see him fight? Just fight someone at 154 pounds. Take on someone decent now. That's all we need to do. And Hosecito, go down, get your rematch with Victor Ortiz, cash in that check, and then you can go on with your career. Who else was that? My Donna. I wasn't very impressed with my Donna. Um, he's very hot and cold, my Donna. He came out, started very well, came out firing big shots. Uh, Karas took them for the most part. Then Karas came back, and Maidana was was on the back foot for a bit, which was very unheard of. You know, um, yeah, he was. It didn't look good for him because he was blowing. He was clearly under pressure, and then that's all that happened. Maidana came back, and the ref stopped the fight. Very smart referee. And I, I wasn't really bothered by anything else that night. Um, where did they go from there? I think he wants Malinaji. I think he set himself up for Malinaji. Which is going to be it. I think Malinaji's got him. I reckon Malinaji's got, got um, Maidana. If not, Maidana wins uh, against Malinaji. He's a two-weight world champion. Oh, my God. Uh, what do we think about that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe Maidana's anything better than a B-level fighter. I think he's a type of fringe contender. Um, I'd actually like to see Maidana take on Keith Thurman now. You know, he didn't take that Keith Thurman fight. And I think we know why. I'd like to see him take on Keith Thurman next. Who else fought that night? Hernandez and Troy Ross. I actually thought Hernandez won it, but I could make a you know a situation for it either way, one point either way. Um huge power by Ross. Huge power. Great punching power. Um Hernandez very hot and cold. Very hot and cold. Each round. You know, I didn't enjoy his performance that night. I think I don't, know, I don't actually know what was going on, really. You know, he was lucky enough to get stopped in one of the rounds. Showing great survival instinct. But, you know, that's how boxing goes sometimes. Sometimes when you're in Germany as well, you're not going to get the decision, even if you kill the fella in the ring. So, I've got nothing to say on that fight. The right was always on the, on the wall. Um, next, we should be looking at Hernandez versus Hook. And I'm going with Hook by knockout. <laughs> 